All right, so now we're going to try and wind our um, by fill our pancake coil out of this tape which we have two rolls of and I'm just in the process of making a jig because we've got a roll um, of course both at the same time and while we're doing that we have to put a layer of insulation tape at the same time between all the layers so we've got our um, two rolls of sticky tape here I'm going to screw them in position I'll screw this uh, Teflon board into position and we have that there because of course the tapes sit on their own little roller and we want to get the roll of copper in the middle of the tape so we had to lift this up a little to get it in the middle of the tape so that's 5mm and this here is 12mm like so, so uh, that's the plan um, but while we're winding all four of these on our spool at once we've also got to uh, at the same time it's getting even trickier oh, remove that white protective layer um, from the sticky back of the copper on both rolls so um, that's the challenge ahead but uh, we'll keep on plodding along and see how we go we'll come back and have a look at our progress uh, once I've finished the jig of course we've got to make some sort of spindle and carrier in the middle yet fix all these down um, I'll probably just put uh, three screws in here for that to spin around on because it does have a uh, nylon or plastic insert ring in the middle which is good um, and then we'll see how we go. This stuff's pretty delicate, so um, I think it's only like 70 microns thick. But uh, we're going to give it a try. And also, as we're winding it, we've got to um, bring out test points. So I'm actually going to cut maybe 300 mil off each roll, so we can bring our vertical test points out at each part of the uh, coil. Probably every 10 turns or so often, just for um, the experiments ahead. So I'll keep plodding along and uh, we'll see how this all turns out. Could end up messy, it could end up working. Okay, well first we had a brain fart and um, both rolls of tape on one side, both rolls of sticky tape on the other. So of course we're putting two layers of tape on one roll of the copper and nothing on the other one. So um, we've had to put one roll at uh, the left side of the two rolls of tape sticky tape and the other roll on the other side um, we started winding and I noticed the coil started climbing higher and higher so we've now had to put these two um, plates in to keep the copper going on the coil level but um, so far it looks like it's working and they're going on nice and even so um, of course we have to keep peeling this backing off and now I'm at the point where I want to put my first two test points on so I've got to take this bit that I cut off cut some small pieces out and solder vertically off of our two windings here which should be a whole heap of fun and um, keep on winding and see what we end up with but um, it seems to be working Okay, as you can see where the coil started to climb and I've now pulled it back down level. So we're going to have a high bit in the middle, but um, I'm certainly not going to attempt to unwrap it. Just lessons learned as you go along. So um, now we're just using these two bits of uh, copper here to keep the tape at the same level so it stops climbing up higher and higher, otherwise we're going to end up with a big bowl. But um, so far so good. But now I'm going to go and get a coffee. Come back and keep on winding. And uh, we'll come back and have a look when I'm finished. Alright, so we're about halfway. You can see I've been putting my test points in throughout the coil. Um, one on each uh, roll or layer or wire if we want to call it that. Um, at opposite points as we go 
about um, every 20 turns. So um, the backing on uh, this one is peeling itself off now. That's good, so I only have to peel this one off manually as we're going. But um, so far, so good. It's not looking too bad. Bit of a bugger about that little cock up at the start before I put the um, plates on, but it's not really that bad. So uh, we'll keep on going and see what we end up with. Oh, and um, we did do a uh, continuity test, and so far, so good, no short. So it seems to be working okay. And um, hopefully, it'll continue to do so till we get to the end. Okay, so that's it finished. Now you're going to say. That looks pretty small, but um, there's over 50 feet of um, copper tape on each one of the wines. So the first thing we test, that uh, is the one you hold your breath on, is our continuity test. And um, hopefully it's open circuit, which it is, no noise. Um, and some of these test points, half of them will make a noise and half of them will not. Or should I say half, you'll hear a buzz and half of them you will not. So, um, so far so good. What we want to check now is our capacitance and we've only been getting three, four nanofarads out of our um, other coils. We'll now turn it to 20. Ooh, this is good. Okay, so we've got 33.6 nanofarads of capacitance which means should mean that this is going to have a very low resonant frequency. Now if we go to our inductance, doesn't seem to want to play the game. So I don't really know what's to go with this bloody inductance meter on this multimeter. It's not very good, I don't think. LX. LX is on. Well, I'm sure it's not going to be over two Henrys. Well, that's telling us diddly shit. Why? <laughs> because we're not measuring from the right point, we're measuring from an open, open circuit. Let's see if I can just get that on there. Oh, there we go. Okay. Pretty low, 0 0.41 millihenries um, on one coil. So when um, we'd have to hook the two up in series to get a combined inductance reading. But um, so far so good. I'm going to uh, start doing a few little tests on this now. So um, next video we'll uh, set it up on a board and whack some circuits on and start sending some um, signals through it and see what happens. Okay, uh, we'll give you a little taste of our first test. We're just looking for the resonant frequency of this coil we were hoping for a low one and we have it 43.8 kilohertz relatively low um, so channel 1, our yellow channel is across our signal generator so we can get the RMS value going in there we then have our resistor and channel 2 is across the coil so um, channel 1 we have an RMS value of 2.09 08 volts. 
the signal generator says 2.12 so we have a difference of 0.04 of a volt um, which I'm pretty sure we could account for in that nice long lead so pretty spot on there um, that's also good to know that the um, signal generator is going to give us a very close to being correct value of the RMS voltage that it's delivering to the circuit and um, our RMS value across the coil is 16.2 volts and we are nearly dead in phase that's as close as I can get it for some reason either side of that frequency it goes up so 6.31 degrees variation in the um, voltage and current which is very close to uh, being spot on so that's it that's our resonant frequency 43.8 kilohertz so that's uh, where we're at now and we can start all different types of tests we will um, disconnect our bridge from the first and second winding along the way and do some tests um, in regards to parts man's circuit see what we come up with there but um, it seems to have worked out okay we had no shorts we've got all our test points in we have a nice low resonant frequency because we have a high capacitance value as expected and um, I was expecting a little higher but um, with the two layers of tape or the layer of tape in between it's um, spaced it out a fair whack and of course there is some gaps we've got it fairly tight but uh, best we could do with the quick little jig we made that's it we're up and running and um, doing quite fine at the moment we're off to a good start so, um, next we're going to be checking all these little points and uh, seeing what our uh, voltages and current is doing at each point so it should be some uh, fun testing coming up with the Tesla Bifilla pancake coil where we have used tape instead of wire which is why it's so small because the tape is 0.07 micron thick instead of uh, 0.3 or 0.4 millimetres 3 or 400 microns which we were uh, using when we were using the wire we ended up with a really large coil for the same amount of uh, wire to ribbon cable so it's a um, very small little coil but um, that's all there. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next video.